Hi there. It's me again, your humble neighborhood friendly stroke assaulter. Um, I'm going to do an update video. Um, I've done a video before about post-stroke fatigue, but recently in conversations at the support group I go to in person in the city I'm in, and then conversations I've seen on uh, Facebook, uh, a couple of the support groups I belong to there, such as Young Stroke Survivors and, and Stroke Talk recently, there's been a couple conversations or threads about post-stroke fatigue, so I just thought I'd revisit it. So, when you go to your doctor um, after your stroke, be it your neurologist, your GP, or any other specialist, there are occasions, and I'm going to be honest about this, you're going to get very expensive, educated guesses. They're going to give you, from their experience, their education, their judgment, their expertise, their practice, their patient exposure, the papers they've read, the seminars they've been to, whatever the case may be, um, they're going to give you best guess. It's going to be an educated guess, right? It, that's just the thing. Um, so I'm here to give you some very <clears throat> also educate, uh, you know, reasonably educated, unexpensive guesses about m sort of my experience and, and the perceptions I have of others' experiences. Um, I'm not a doctor. Only, I've only ever played one on TV, so everything I'm going to give you is not medical advice. So, um, yeah, enough said there. So, what happens is this. You have a stroke. Um, and it, it's irrelevant the type of stroke you had. You had a stroke. Um, about two-thirds of all people that have had a stroke report fatigue after the stroke. Uh, now, the great news is, because your stroke was so unique to you, and you are unique in and of yourself, um, how that impacts you, where that impacts you, when that impacts you, and what exactly causes the fatigue to get triggered, I have no idea, right? Um, so, some people, they get fatigue almost immediately after the stroke, and that was my experience, um, and it lessens over time. And again, that is my experience. I'm, you know... entering, you know, the beginning of my fourth month since my stroke. Other people, <clears throat> they will have stroke fatigue um, almost immediately after their stroke, and it will have longevity. It may last beyond a year. Um, some of those people will never know a life again without fatigue. Uh, there are other people that they will not have fatigue initially after their stroke. They will have to wait a period of time. Some have said... And, and the research I've done either on the Facebook groups or, or on the internets, um, some have said it, it, it took 8 to 12 months to show up, uh, and then it lasted, you know, 6 months to a year after that. Um, and then there are other people, the lucky ones, uh, that will never really experience fatigue. Now, I'm going to assert, and again, this is simply my opinion based on my experience, I'm going to assert almost everyone's going to be fatigued after their stroke. Initially after your stroke, I'm going to say almost everyone's going to be fatigued. Think about it. You almost died. Okay? Your brain tried to kill you. So you're kind of a voyeur um, when it comes to this whole, you're in the hospital, you know, it doesn't matter where your stroke was. Was it in the community at a mall? Was it at a social event? Was it in a restaurant? Was it at school? Was it at work? Like my experience, you know, was it at home? You know, um, how quickly or not did you get the hospital? Again, is a little bit irrelevant. You had a stroke. Um, I will be honest. I, I'm, I'm a very lucky individual, right? Very lucky. Um, and I try not to ever take that for granted. Um, that being said, um, everyone initially is going to have some level of fatigue after their stroke because, you know, you end up in the hospital by ambulance or not, you end up in an emergency room, you end up in an ICU unit, you end up in a stroke unit, in a step down unit or whatever, right? Um, you know, the stroke itself is very, very debilitating, very draining, um, do not do what I did and, and try to like just carry on like nothing happened. Like, I'm fine. I'll just motor through. Yeah, biggest mistake of my life. 
Um, so, um, you, you're kind of a voyeur. They won't let you out of bed for the first 24 to 36 hours. They're poking, they're prodding you. Um, they come in, hook you up to machines that go ping. I think when I left the hospital, I had 16 or 17 of those little sticky things from the EKGs. Uh, fun fact, they only needed to put 12 on you, but it seems like every single nurse wanted to put on their own set. So, you finally get through the stroke, right? And in the first first week or so, you're not that useful, right? So, you're just going to be fatiguing. You're probably going to do a lot of sleeping. Now, I can't speak for late onset fatigue because that's not my experience. I, I can definitely speak for early onset fatigue. Um, and I can speak for fatigue in a general sense. And, and again, I don't mean to speak for anyone in specific. This is more me sharing my experiences. So what will cause fatigue? Anything. Yep, another very inexpensive, educated guess. Anything. Could it be ambient transient noise? Like walk into a restaurant and realize you're like, nope, this is going to just set my brain on fire. Could it be strobe lights? Could it be fluorescent lights? Could it be bright, harsh lights? Could it be, um, you know, uh, being physically active? Uh, and I mean, I don't mean trying to, you know, bench press 300 pounds. I mean, let's walk to the store. Um, could it be um, trying to make decisions? You know, uh, there are times where when I try to make, like, actually think through a process of what am I going to do, it becomes a little bit taxing. So I'm going to be honest, a lot of things can cause the fatigue. Now, and then again, what causes fatigue today is not necessarily what's going to cause it tomorrow. So in some cases, there's no predictor or benchmark or, you know, a registration point, a witness mark, you know, whatever you want to call it of this is where my stroke is. Check. This is where my fatigue is. Check. You know, so you, you're expecting this will be fatiguing every single time. Well, no, I'm sorry. That's not the case. Um, what you're able to do today may, again, be what you're able to do tomorrow. But tomorrow you might have inadvertently kind of taken three steps backwards. And and, and that's not to say every day is going to be a three-day step, a three, three, uh, like a three-step back day, right? That can just sort of happen, unfortunately. So things that I found fatiguing right? Um, scan, track, and move, right? Now, what do I mean by that? Picture your grocery store. You're in an aisle. You've got pastas and pasta sauce on the left-hand side, and you've got cereal on the right-hand side of the aisle, right? Probably an unrealistic example, but we're going to use it. So, I know that I need um, pasta, two types. <clears throat> I need cereal, one type, specific brand name, specific cereal, and I need some pasta sauce. Um, so I have to move down the aisle. And as I'm moving down the aisle, I have to scan the aisle for what I'm looking for. And then once I found it, I got to track it to go, there it is, there it is, right? Um, so I know where I am spatially in relationship to that thing. So scan, track, and move, I give you a shit show absolute unadulterated shit show um if it was something and this continues to be a problem if it's something that's below kind of waist knee level depending on how big deep thick the shelves are and the item i need to get bending over i'm a write-off um you know it's just a reality i can't bend over that well um i get very very dizzy uh it's a bit disconcerting at times so scan track and move for me it still has fatigue element um, bending over, if I have to do a lot of bending over, fun fact, would not be that happy or that popular with the prison crowd, but, you know, moving on. Um, so, conversations. Initially, after my stroke, um, I, ha I, I couldn't deal with noise coming from multiple directions, so I had to make sure that if I was having a conversation with people, as in a group of, they kind of all had to be in front of me, and I had to look at each individual, and I kind of had to ask people to just talk it one at a time, right? Just one at a time. Um, that, luckily, doesn't isn't so much of an issue. Um, sometimes it can be, but that pretty much is, is no longer an issue for me. It can be in very limited instances, um, but I just suck it up and deal.
unless I really have to say, hey, listen, I kind of need this. Um, fluorescent lights. I had to buy sunglasses. So if you watch the video, I wear my sunglasses at night. You know, that that was totally a thing. I have to wear sunglasses at night. I don't have a choice. You know, I, I legitimately don't have a choice. Um, if I'm going to a store, any place with fluorescent overhead lighting, I have to wear sunglasses. Um, you know, physical activity can be taxing. Um, just walking down the street to the corner store. Okay? If you've had your driver's license taken away or they've advised you, please don't drive until we tell you to, well, you know, um, you know, you now have to get on the bus. Well, just getting on the bus and cause the bus is now moving fairly quickly. Um, I sometimes that found that fatiguing because I had to find a spot where to look and not really adjust my gaze. Um, because looking around while the bus was moving was a bit fatiguing. So, and you're going to have days where you have zero fatigue. Like, you do not feel fatigued, right? And then all of a sudden you're going to hit an 8 on a scale of 1 to 10. You're like, bang, you're done. I'm now fatigued. What caused it? Who knows, right? <clears throat> you're going to have other days where your fatigue level starts out at a 2 to 3 and stays 2 3 for the entire day. And then you're going to have other days where your fatigue is, you know, you get up and you start out at an eight. Um, other things that might cause fatigue uh, could be reading, right? Anything that is mentally, requires mental acuity, mental focus, that may be taxing and, and there, thereby cause fatigue. Um, so fatigue after stroke, <clears throat> it's a huge deal. Will you get fatigue after stroke? There's a high likelihood, yes. Um, will the fatigue after stroke cause some initial impairments? Uh, yeah, it will. Will the fatigue after stroke initially cause some difficulty? Yeah, it will, right? So you as the stroke assaulter need to accept the fact that you may get fatigued. There's just no way around that. However, you as the stroke assaulter then have to turn to your supporters, right? your yeomanry and uh, tell them, Hey, I need this. Like I'm kind of on my chin strap. Things are really shitty. I need to go lie down, right? Wake me up in three hours. Right. Um, or you know what? I need to be in a quiet dark room or I need whatever it is you need for you. Um, you know, people are in my case, you're just going to have to accept the fact that I wear sunglasses now indoors. And, and if you can't, well, you're a horrible human and I don't really need to interact with you. Um, so just be mindful when you're attempting <clears throat> the recovery, the rehabilitation and the reintegration uh, from your stroke, right? You are going to be or have a high likelihood of being fatigued. Uh, what will cause fatigue in one person may not cause fatigue in another. Um, how long will the fatigue last in one patient may not be the same experience for another. So there is no direct comparison stroke to stroke right uh, there is no direct comparison post-stroke experience to post-stroke experience because a lot of us that are you know stroke folk we have relatively the same experiences in very general terms however <clears throat> my symptomology during my stroke right will be or could be drastically different than how you presented during your stroke Right? So your stroke was yours. My stroke is mine. We're going to share the fact that we're stroke folk, right? We may not share the same symptoms. And for those of you that are supporting the assaulters, um, you need just to be mindful that if they ask you, hey, I'm kind of buggered. Um, I really need this right now. Just do it. Right? Help with the fatigue. Uh, because... This is the the most difficult thing for anyone that's going to have to go through something. This is it, right? Um, I'll be honest. I don't even think I would wish this upon the person I dislike the most on the planet. Because you lose 
a lot of yourself in some cases. You learn a lot about yourself. You lose some of yourself. Um, this is a very guttural experience. Um, and there, there's so many new things you have to learn, or in some cases relearn the old things. So <clears throat> just having the stroke is fatiguing enough. Just trying to navigate the world after the stroke is even more fatiguing. And so if you happen to have fatigue after stroke, please just accept the fact that you need to nap. Just accept the fact that you may not be able to do the exact same things as you were able to do them before your stroke. You may have to learn to improvise, adapt, overcome, and persevere. You may have to learn, unfortunately, life may now have limitations. Um, so on that note, if you happen to like what you've been watching over the last um, four and a bit months, please like, share, subscribe with your friends. I do have a new subscriber, Sheepdog, Sheepdog Triple One. Uh, I got your comment last night. I responded to it. Thank you for joining our merry little band. Um, and if you like to see me cover any specific content, <clears throat> please leave a comment down below. Or you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. <clears throat> and at that point, I'll cover whatever I can. Um, however, just please be mindful. I might take a day or two to get back to you. I do try to respond to any and all comments. Um, and, you know... If there's something, you know, you happen to see around you or in yourself that makes you think you are having a stroke, right? <clears throat> and that generally is known as um, fast, right? Face, you've got facial droop. A, um, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. S, uh, you can't smile effectively or equally or at all. Um, you have speech difficulties, you're slurring, you're stuttering your speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, right? Um, you're unable to stand uh, unaided. You have general body weakness or weakness on one side. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.